Welcome everybody to a special episode of The Real Mentor. Of course, I'm counting down the top 10 movies of 2016. Very excited to bring you what which are my highest re recommendations of the year. The movies that if you haven't seen them, definitely go watch them. Some of these on theaters, some of these you can catch at home video. So don't, don't waste any more time. Go catch any, anything I have on this list if you haven't done so already. But of course, with any list, it's, it's difficult. It's hard for me. This was a really kind of difficult year. There wasn't that one movie that's really stood out from the rest, head and shoulders above the rest. There really wasn't. There was a lot of good movies. The, 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 the beginning of the year started kind of slow. The summer was very lackluster. But the last two or three months ended really, really strong but nothing really separated itself from the pack. So it's very hard coming up with this list, to be honest with you. And even now as I'm thinking about it, my top three uh, kind of, I can interchange them and I'm still thinking about which, which ones I'm actually gonna put in what order. But be that as it may, of course, and I try to keep this versatile. I wanna have uh, action adventure, some sci-fi, of course, your, your dramas, um, yeah, I just want uh, animation. I wanna have everything kind of represented as best as possible, um, including putting not, not only putting movies that are my personal affairs, but movies that are legitimately, uh, objectively great, great films as a whole. So, um, but before we get to the list, let me give you some of uh, my honorable mentions, the ones that just missed the cut. Um, in the world of horror, uh, we have a couple of movies that stood out to me this year. One was Lights Out, um, and then Green Room was another one. It's a small movie that went under the radar, starring Patrick Stewart, of course, Captain Picard himself. Uh, this is a great survival thriller slash horror movie. If you like, if you like that kind of thing, uh, I think you can catch it on Amazon Prime for free, so it, it, it won't cost you anything. Uh, and animation, this was a tough one. I, I had to leave this one off the top 10 list, and that's Zootopia. Great movie, it's a great animation movie, appealing to kids and adults, which any great animation movie should do. Um, it has a great theme, which is so socially relevant in today's times. So well done, but I just felt there's a couple other ones that are a little bit better than Zootopia, that if you haven't seen it, must watch. Um, and a comedy, this was a kind of a light year for comedy, but I'll bring up a couple of movies. One, The Edge of Seventeen, a great coming of age story, uh, coming of age story, and also Nice Guys. When we kind of talk about flying under the radar, it was poorly marketed, released way too early with Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. Uh, great little comedy. I think Shane Black directed that one. Is one I also recommend. Uh, of course, big budget superhero stuff, I guess. I got to talk about two of them. One's uh, Captain America Civil War, which I could see that being in other people's top 10 list. Uh, and the other one is Deadpool. Deadpool came out of nowhere. This was the best superhero movie of the year for that reason, not because it, it was so surprisingly, it was so surprisingly good, but just the irreverent and meta humor that it had is the most unique and different superhero movie we've seen in a long time. That's definitely worth a watch. Um, and of course, in, in terms of, you know, the dramas and the Oscar contending movies, I saw pretty much all of them except for maybe Line and, um, and Silence, which I didn't get to go see yet. But everything else I saw and the three that kind of stood out to me more than anything else was, uh, actually four of them was Fences. Uh, Loving, Jackie, and Manchester by the Sea, which I caught a couple of days ago. Uh, these are really good movies, but in other words, these are the kind of movies uh, that the Academy eats up because they are what they are and they love their dramas. And unfortunately, a couple of movies that even I have on my list are going to get shortchanged because of, because of it. it. It's unjust, but it is what it is. But movies like Jackie and Fences were good, um, but there were more great performances, fantastic performances, and otherwise, decent movie. Uh, Denzel Washington, you know, of course, and Fences, um, you know, and uh, Jackie, you have Natty Portman, who's probably going to win the Oscar. She should win the Oscar. She, she's that good. But the movie is, is good. Manchester by the Sea, Casey Affleck, given the Oscar. But it's just that movie so damn depressing. It's well made, but it's depressing as hell. Um, so, but again, this is loving. Uh, Ruth Negga is fantastic. Uh, Joe Edgerton, great. They'll be nominated. And th those movies are definitely worth watching. So now, on to the top 10. Of course, we'll start with the bottom. Number 10 itself. We have Patriots Day. This is a movie which I debated having on the list or not. I made it at the last second. I think it deserved to be there. It's Peter Berg's best movie um, and also Mark Warburg's best movie in terms of performance anyway. A great movie, obviously, detailing the, the, the events that happened in the marathon, uh, the, the bombing of the marathon back in 2013. Really well done. Very respectful to, to the material that's trying to present. Very visceral and graphic, and it needed to be uh, really well done. And, and it's very emotional. You're going gonna to go through a range of emotions. This is a movie that's it's an, it's an important movie, one you should definitely watch. And unfortunately, it, it got released this week with five other, six other movies, so it's going to be criminally unseen. It is what it is, but if you guys get a chance to go watch it, it's a must watch. And number nine, this is my first cheat. I got two cheats. This is cheat number one. I have to have it, Star Wars, Star Wars Rogue One. Uh, I'm a huge Star Wars buff. 
and there's not a chance a Star Wars movie was not gonna make my list this year. I had Force Awakens last year and I'm on my four or five, I believe. This movie is better than that. This is the best Star Wars movie since the original trilogy. So well done, great characters, good moments of levity. The third act is sensation, the best action adventure movie of the year bar none. At number eight, we have Moonlight. Now, Moonlight is a movie that's catching a ladder fire. It was the second, tied for second most nominated in the Critics' Choice Awards a few weeks back. It's a great character study, a movie which you're gonna hear a lot about, and there's no doubt it's gonna be nominated for Oscars across the board. First time director, beautifully shot, great performances across the board by this kid who, they focus on the kid when he's like in elementary and high school when he's an adult, and uh, all the things that surround him, how it affects his life personally. But it's, you know, he's, he's grown up in the project, has a mom in drugs, so it seems like a stereotypical movie for that kind of thing, but it's not, it breaks those, those barriers because it focuses a lot more on his sexuality. So it gives you something completely different, really well made. It's not for everybody, a very slow pace, but it's so good as a film, it's fantastic. At number seven, this is my, again, second and last cheat. I couldn't decide which one was better, so I put both of them in the realm of animation. I had to have Moana and Kubo and the Two Strings. I love both of these movies, and I debated which one was better. I just, in my heart, I could not leave one of these movies out. They gave us something different, particularly with the protagonists. That usually, you have the on the princess side, you have the white female, or you know, white. It's a focus on that, but here we have the focusing on the island culture and the, and the Asian culture, something a little bit different, refreshing. Disney, obviously, Disney Moana, it, it, Disney does what it gives you, and they, they always give you quality movies. But this one was surprising how, how good it was um, that what I was expecting the rock is great in it music is fantastic it's, a, it's great for all ages uh, and it looks fantastic uh, Kubo and Two Strings probably the, the best uh, looking movie animation wise the stop motion animation looks sensational creative uh, creatively done a creative original story you haven't seen in a while two that are worth watching I can't recommend either one of those two enough and again the adults will be entertained the kids will be entertained uh, not only visually but from a, uh, from a story standpoint as well at number six, we have a war film, Hacksaw Ridge. That's right, Mel Gibson is back where he belongs, and that's behind the camera. He has no business being in the front of the camera, despite what anybody might think of him. Yes, he's nutty. He's a great director, and his resume speaks for itself. Uh, and this one's no different. This is a, a triumph. Uh, this is a really, really great war movie. Uh, Andrew Garfield at, at his best. I heard he might get nominated for Silence. I haven't seen it, so I don't know, but if not, he'll be, he should get nominated for this one. A phenomenal story about a guy who, a pacifist, who goes into the army and saves about 75 uh, people without ever shooting any kind of weapon at all. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's incredible. And it's so well done, so well directed, so very visceral. And that's what, and Mel Gibson knows how to do a big uh, blockbuster action scenes. He, that's, that's his forte. He does it so well. And this is a movie, if you haven't seen it, t take a chance on it. It's really, really good. And number five, there's a movie which I thought, uh, going into it, maybe my favorite movie of the year. It didn't quite reach those heights, and that's not a knock on the movie. It's still a great movie, still in my top 10 at number five. Um, I think Madugo plays a young kid, and he's fantastic in it, who is uh, going through a lot emotionally. His mom is dying of cancer, his grandmother is trying to turn his world upside down, he's being, he's being bullied at school, and his kid turns to his imagination in the form of a kind of a monster giant tree, a voice by Liam Neeson, and who try to help, and this tree helps his boy along in, in terms of coming to grips with what's going on, getting a hand on his emotions and what he's feeling and why he's feeling it. It's, it's a definitely a creative narrative. It looks fantastic. It's the best, besides Kubo and Two Strings, the best looking movie and it's art direction and presentation is, is bar none it's very emotional you're gonna cry if you don't you just don't have a heart but this movie is great and it's and unfortunately because it's kind of a fantasy-esque it's not really it's not really a kid's movie at all it's a very dark film but it's gonna get shown by the academy and I, I know it unfortunately it is what it is we'll see loving a typical oscar bait movie and like i said it's not a bad movie but it's kind of a shame to be perfectly honest with you but this one actually hasn't been released nationally yet so you can catch that at the beginning of 2017 so that's that's one i definitely guarantee you guys go check out now number four we have a movie i've been raving about since i believe august september when i first saw it i think it was august was hell or high water this is a, a very grounded western isk western feel like movie it's not a western at all but it's a small movie about a, a couple of brothers played by Chris Pine and Ben Foster who are robbing banks for reasons I don't want to spoil and are being chased by Jeff Bridges. It's a great cat and, mouse, cat and mouse game. Bridges is great. He'll get nominated. Ben Foster, sensational. He'll get nominated. Chris Pine, Chris Pine's at his best. He won one nomination. Uh, I wouldn't mind if he did, but I don't think he will. But this is a movie that proves he can truly act and just be a pretty boy in movies like Star Trek and all that and action movies. This is a legitimate, nuanced performance. The best I've ever seen him. Great movie. Again, it's very grounded. It's got a surprise here and there. Performances across the board. One I, I, I really watch, wish everybody would go out there and watch. Here we go. Top three and 
I'm gonna go with my personal favorite movie of the year. I know it's not the best movie, which is why I have it at three, but the one that resonated with me the most that I, I kind of I, I kind of stuck with me more than any other movie for for, for personal reasons, and that's Sing Street. Uh, this is a movie now you, you actually it's you can catch on Netflix, so it won't cost you anything. Uh, and unfortunately, it's gonna get shunned by the Academy because it was released way early in the year, uh, much like uh, Ex Machina was last year. Uh, it's a shame. It's criminally a shame, but. The movie that's been made is a great, charming movie about a boy who is trying to get with a girl and, and he wants her to be in her music video. The thing is, he doesn't play music, doesn't even have a band. So he's got to scramble around to learn to play music, get a band, put it together and try to keep her, keep her along until she can actually be in their video. Um, so it's a very charming movie, very great coming of age story. Set in the 80s, so the music is fantastic if you're an 80s fan. And the original music is great that they actually wrote for the movie that, with, the, uh, with the kids playing the band. And it really helps tell this story. And it's not just music for the sake of it, some you know, cheesy montage music video. The music allows you to see what Eowyn's go what's going on around him, or what he's feeling. So well done. And again, the underlying theme is brotherhood and how his brother um, is trying to help him along, you know, supporting him. It's just a great story. Actually, I actually absolutely love this movie. It's on Netflix. Go check it out. And number two, I'm going to science fiction. I could have had this number one, could have had this number three again. It's Arrival, Denis Villeneuve, who's quickly become one of my favorite directors, giving us Prisoners, giving us Sicario last year. Now this, wonderfully directed, perfectly shot, great scenes. It's an alien invasion movie, but it's not your typical alien invasion movie. It's very grounded, very intimate, focused on Amy Adams' character, who she will be nominated for an Oscar in this role, and what she goes through and trying to communicate with the aliens and discovering the secrets of what's going on behind the aliens and within her as well. This is a movie you're gonna walk out you're going to be talking about it. something that's so thought-provoking. It's a thinking man science fiction movie. Not your typical, obviously, ID4, Independence Day, or whatever it is, you know, District 9, which I love. It's, it's a diff totally different take on that genre. So well done. It's, it, it looks great. Some way that needs to be appreciated in the big screen. It's just still being in theaters. Uh, and, and this is one where I was so sure it's going to be nominated for the Oscar. Uh, now I'm not sure. The Academy, I know they look at science fiction movies a different way. I'm hoping it does. It'd be a shame if it did, if it get left out, because the movie is that good. Trust me, I love this movie. Uh, no, no, no doubt about it. And number one, and number one, you know, I love Kool-Aid, and it's been, you know, providing, quenching the thirst of millions of kids, you know, the sugary treats for years since I was yay high. And this movie got a lot of hype leading into it. The most um, nom uh, not nominated movie at the, critical, at the Critics' Choice Awards. And I saw his movie and I drank the Kool-Aid. I couldn't help it. Uh, this is uh, the same director who gave me my favorite and best movie in 2014 in Whiplash. And that is La La Land. This movie is, is great. It's the most uh, original story of the year in terms of presentation, something different, the most different movie to go watch. Yes, in essence, is a musical, which I don't like musicals. Uh, and it starts off with the musical number. I'm like, okay, here we go, dancing and singing for the whole damn movie every two minutes. And that just drives me nuts. But it's not like that at all. Uh, it's again, much like with Whiplash, it, it, those two things, one obviously the focus, such a music heavy oriented movie, obviously it's a musical. Um, but number two, it also tells a tale of ambition, but in a different way, where there's Whiplash, the, the dangers of ambition uh, and the dark side of it. Here more on the, on the opposite on the, the, the spectrum, uh, the ambition driving you forward, driving, driving you to reach your dreams, a very positive message and it's anybody can relate to whether the music, sensational, Emma Stone, the best she's ever been, she'll get nominated, of course. The direction, it's a clinic in great direction and how he tells the story. He has a great ending, which you don't really expect, which you think is gonna end the way, the way by the way the movie is kind of going, but it, it kind of takes, takes a turn there, which I really appreciate. And it, like I said, the first act, there's some music and dancing in there, not much, but then it, it lets the story unfold and it lets it and then go to like almost a normal kind of narrative, n narrative throughout. There is some music peppered in, not just when they sing, but the, from the band that, that Gosling plays in, there's a lot of cool little jazz-like music in there. And so it, it's not a true, true musical, and I think that's better because that's gonna appeal to a broader audience. This is a way it makes you feel good. You're gonna get emotional. It's great. If you walk out of like, I walked out of like, man, I, I really love this movie. It's the best movie of the year. I'm not saying it's my favorite, um, my personal favorite, but I gotta admit, objectively speaking, it's the best movie of the year. Give it the Oscar, wrap it up, done. It's a wrap, no doubt about it. And, and deservedly so. It's a movie, if you haven't seen it yet, it's out on theaters. Only came out a couple weeks ago, uh, wide release, so you can still catch it. Great fun movie. I, I can't recommend this movie enough. So there we go, that's the top 10, the 10 best of the year and some obviously honorable mentions. Uh, if you guys agree with the list, well, what should I have taken out? What should I add it in there? Comment below as always, what's your favorites? I love reading your comments. If you haven't done so already, as always, subscribe below, 
feed money to go to the movies and talk about it afterwards. And of course, have a great, safe, wonderful holiday season. Have a wonderful new year. Looking forward to a huge 2017. See you guys next time.